this is going to be an alternate historical scenario for La Bataille de Jena. I was inspired by the alternate Jena, the super Jena that comes with the game that uh, supposes the Prussians did not make their maneuver. They concentrated their army at Jena and you fight a massive battle between the two consolidated armies. The interesting thing is that it kind of turns the game around a little bit. If the historical scenario is all about the French, the alternate is a little bit more about the Prussians. Now, reflecting on my experiences with the historical scenario, one of the real challenges is not just that it's hard to play the Prussians, it's it's kind of boring. They don't have any real activities to undertake beyond taking a beating and dying slowly. And, and that gets a little boring to play. So I thought I would steal the ideas out of the Super Yena and do a slightly alternate historical Yena. The idea is to preserve the historical situation. The Prussians are still making their movement to the northeast and Hohenlohe is there to perform a flank guard. Supposing the Prussians do a better job with their march and maneuver, Hohenlohe is then free to conduct a delaying action and then retreat, not, you know, more or less west towards Weimar, but kind of north-northwest towards Apulda and take up position as the rear guard of the army. With that in mind, he can then take more of an active approach to this battle, fighting a screening action and an orderly withdrawal. Those things are stolen straight out of the Super Yena game, the delaying action option, but I thought they could work in the historical context as well. Now most of this alternate historical is based on the historical scenario. The same special rules are in effect, such as for fog and uh, boundaries of the map and so on. The French setup and arrivals are unchanged, but the coalition arrivals and setup will be quite a bit changed. We'll suppose they did a bit better job planning for a fighting withdrawal, and will array their forces a little more in defense and depth with a plan towards retreating towards that uh, side of the map towards Apulda. The victory conditions are going to be a combination of the historical scenario, the super Yana scenario, and a bit of a wrinkle for this alternate historical. Essentially, the French still have their objectives. They think they're the aggressor, so they're going to attempt to achieve those timed objectives that are represented in the historical scenario. But we're also going to have the coalition have some inducements of their own. Specifically, if they're able to affect a good order fighting withdrawal from the field, they will be rewarded. And if the French are able to harm them so much that they cannot make a good order withdrawal, well, they'll be penalized and the French will be rewarded. Those ideas are kind of cobbled together from the Super Yena scenario. But I wanted to add one more thing, which is, what about Rukul? If he is committed to this fight, that means that the rear guard, flank guard action isn't going very well. And that would be bad for the coalition and good for the French. But if Rukul is not committed, that means the coalition must be confident in what they're doing and they should be rewarded for that. And conversely, if the French are able to force a commitment of Rukul, they will be rewarded for putting the Prussians in a bad situation. But that also ties into the uh, victory points for losses inflicted. The French can't ignore Rukul and his possible commitment, even if they're um, not in the best of condition. They still face the possibility of an unexpected Prussian arrival on an exposed flank. So they have to make sure they're still taking into account the potential arrival of an enemy force, even though it's kind of towards their left and rear in terms of the new direction of the, uh, the battle in this alternate scenario. So the goal was to give the Prussians a more active part, a more deliberate plan to enact, rather than just be the uh, the punching bag for the French. This is a look at the new 
deployment for the Prussians. Much of the light forces have been pushed forward, pretty similar to the historical scenario. But now there are at least three distinct lines. The light forces in the front, that third division in the middle, and then the main line stretching from Mir St. Heiligen over to uh, Nurkwitz, kind of in the same east-west alignment. The battle should play out with the light forces stymieing the French for a while before pulling back behind that second line. The second line will again fight for a little while, just enough to delay, and then pull back behind the main line. And as each line pulls back, they will form the next line behind that main line. And eventually the lines will begin to sort of fall back on each other, heading towards the north, northwest portion of the map and the road to Apolda. The more effective they are at their retreat and keeping good order units, the more they'll be rewarded if they can exit those units off that portion of the map. And they'll start to get crushed up in that area, but as long as they can maintain some portion of their forces in good order, they still will be rewarded for, uh, for that successful withdrawal. And this is the altered Prussian deployment, running east to west, basically, from Nurkfitz here in the east, all the way to Ischerstadt there in the far west. Going down for a closer look, that is the 5th Division Cavalry, holding the far left of the Prussian line, moving to the west, pick up the 4th Division there at Leiston, behind the stream with their light troops out in front of them there as the initial screen. The second division is fairly large and it spans a pretty big stretch there from Aldengana to Krippendorf. And there, the light troops are in the forward line, a little further to the west around Lutzenroden. Come up to Viersing Heiligen. This is the fifth division, the Grenadiers. And then Hohenlohe is on, on the little hill there with the windmill. And moving to the far, we have the remnants of the 1st Division, two, two regiments holding Isterstedt. Since this is the far right of the line, it doesn't need to be held quite as strongly. When we get to the light troops, there's the cavalry of the 2nd Division. The light troops of the 2nd Division at Utsuroda. Third division is there on that hill, kind of in the center of the line, with their cavalry right next to them to the left. Moving forward to Klosvitz Kos uh, there is the light contingent of the third division. And finally, well not quite finally, close to finally, Kospeta has the light troops of the 1st Division. No, I'm sorry, the 2nd Division. Nope, 1st, I'm sorry. 2nd is back there at Lutzerota. Then the last bit of the 1st Division are the cavalry arrayed in the Schnecke Pass there, looking to do some skirmishing and some uh, slow retreats there in front of the advancing French. The French will remain the same, both in their opening positions here on the Vindel and their arrivals. That's Napoleon and the cavalry and some artillery of the 5th Corps with Marshal Vaughan. Now the purpose of this scenario is to put the focus on the Prussians, give them something to do, manage their fighting retreat. So hopefully that'll occur. And it's not an easy thing to do in, in La Bataille. It's, uh, it's difficult to purposefully disengage from the enemy. So I think it'll be an interesting challenge for the Prussians, not just to take blows, 
but to try to tactfully take those blows with the goal of retreating and actually winning, you know, in some, some, I don't know, historically relevant sense, you know, a successful flank guard for the army. Back looking east to west, the far left of the Prussian line, end of the 10 a.m. turn, fog is lifted, so we've seen the battle really start to develop. Just get in a little closer here. Now the French 4th Corps has started to make some moves. But the Prussians were actually pretty effective at delaying the uh, light troops of the 4th Division have kept them at bay, and they have not as yet even reached the town of Leiston, where the balance of the 4th Division is waiting. So the Prussian plan is largely going to form here on the left side, especially with the 5th Division cavalry still waiting there at Nurkwitz to give the French some fits on their flanks. The Prussians will still have a cavalry advantage here on this side. Continuing to move west along the main Prussian line. See the second division is still here. The French have not reached that position. They have reached the second line here. The third division, the Saxons there along the, the hill. With the French approaching, the Saxons sort of impetuously decided to commit their cavalry, not very effectively, to the units routed. One recovered, the other did not. The other made a run at some French guns right there, and those guns held. They disordered in place and rebuffed that charge. So all in all, not great. I think the Saxons have possibly one or two more turns before they're going to have to, uh, to make a run for it. The light troops did their job. They managed to hold during the fog. But eventually they were kicked out of close bits there and are beginning to retreat back behind uh, the main third line. Shifting further west, the French have gotten up to Lutzerode, more or less cleared the village, and they have uh, definitely cleared Kospeta behind it. So the 1st and 2nd Division light troops, again, held just long enough but um, are falling back according to plan, although maybe a little quicker than they would like. The French cavalry was a little stronger, and they managed to push forward pretty quickly. So the Prussians on the, on the right, not quite the center, still have a ways to fall back across this very wide open area, but they're looking to be covered by the 2nd Division Cavalry. And off to the very far right, the Prussians are doing okay holding their own here at the head of the pass. The pretty sizable division of the 7th Corps is being stymied by two regiments of the 1st Division Cavalry, and that's what they're there for. They want to hold those forces back just enough to keep them from turning the flank and permit the Prussians to begin their retrograde movement. So all in all, the Prussians are holding together just barely, but now with the fog completely gone, the French will be able to be pretty aggressive. So we'll see how they hold up for the next, next span of uh, probably two hours. You know, one more thing before we move on here about this little cavalry battle that occurred in front of the Prussian 3rd Division and how lucky the French really were. Those are some heavy Saxon, I don't know if they're the cuirassiers or the carboneers, but uh, they bore down on those guns who happened to be directed by Marshal Mann himself. That was a very dangerous situation for the French. If they could have eliminated those guns, I think they would have captured Marshal Lon himself. No doubt it was his presence that allowed them to withstand the onslaught of that cavalry. So a near miss for the Prussians and a good bit of luck for the French. 